Welcome to the Kinetic Digital Literacy Program. This is the Computer Essentials Module. What is a computer? A computer is a device that accepts information in a digital form and manipulates it for some result based on a program, software, or sequence of instructions on how the data is to be processed. It's an electronic device that manipulates information or data. It has the ability to store, retrieve, and process data. We typically think of computers as desktops or laptops, but today a computer can include smartphones and tablets. All of these devices help you access a program that will take input from you, perform a set of commands, and then give additional information back to you. This includes things like creating documents, sending email, playing games, or browsing the web. In this module, we'll look at two of the primary types of computers, desktops and laptops. In another module, we'll look closer at smartphones and tablets. This is a desktop computer. It's called that because it is large and sits on or next to your desktop. This is a laptop computer. It's called that because everything is contained in one device that runs on batteries and is capable of being used on top of your lap while traveling. The computer components we're going to go through next will apply to both laptops and desktops but we'll show them on a desktop computer. This is called the case. It's the usually metal box that holds all of the other computer components. Both the laptop and desktop have a power button. It will also have a number of spots called ports where you can plug additional components in. These are called USB ports. USB stands for Universal Serial Bus but is always spoken as USB. There are many types of USB ports. This is the most common USB port. It's technically a USB-A port, but we typically just refer to this as a USB port. If it's blue, then it's a USB 3.0 port, which just means it can transfer data much faster and is typically used for external storage devices that we'll talk about in a few minutes. This is a USB-C port. It is the most modern port and it's capable of very high speed data transfer and can actually be used for other things like power and monitors. This is quickly becoming the standard port in connectivity and is used by desktops, laptops, smartphones, and tablets. This is called a mini port. It's usually used for audio connections like headphones and microphones. For most modern desktop computers, there will be connections in front and back. Front connections are usually for speakers or headphones. One big advantage of desktop computers is the ability to add additional components as it can be upgraded or modified easily. Laptop computers typically cannot be updated except with external devices plugged into the USB port. Let's look inside the computer and talk about some of the main features of a computer. The central processing unit or CPU, read-only memory or ROM, and random access memory, or RAM. Inside every computer is a central processing unit, or CPU. The CPU is the engine inside the computer that makes everything work. All programs and operating systems, like Windows, are run by the CPU. The faster the CPU, like the larger the engine, the more applications the computer can run at the same time. Faster CPUs allow the computer to be used for larger, more intense graphics, large spreadsheets, and games. The ROM chip is used to store information that cannot be overwritten or deleted. This is where the information lives that lets the computer start up and test all of its functions called a power on self-test. The operating system, drivers that help it to understand how to work with things like your printer, it is not changeable. RAM memory stands for random access memory and unlike the ROM chip, RAM memory is changeable faster memory and more memory. This is the area that stores everything you're currently working on, including the operating system like Windows, applications like Excel, Photoshop, Google Chrome, and pictures, videos, and games that you're playing. All of these are stored on the hard drive, up next we'll talk about that, and then pushed into RAM when you've loaded them. This makes them run very fast. Also inside of every computer is a storage device called a hard drive. The hard drive stores programs and files so that they can be accessed again later. 
For many computers, the hard drive can be upgraded or additional storage can be added by plugging in an external hard drive to a USB port. The desktop computer has multiple slots that are used to hold things like graphics cards, like this one here. This graphic card has multiple monitor connections that will allow you to connect multiple monitors of various sizes and quality. On a laptop, this graphics port will be built into the side or back of the laptop. These are the two most popular monitor connections, HDMI and DisplayPort. You will typically use HDMI for all of your monitor connections. You'll notice this is the same port that you might have on your television, DVD player, and game system. HDMI is the most common video connector in the world. The other interface is called DisplayPort. It's used by many high-end computer systems, including gaming systems and computers for graphic artists. A monitor is a piece of computer hardware that displays the video and graphics information generated by the connected computer through the computer's video card. Monitors are similar to televisions, but usually display information at a much higher resolution. Also, unlike televisions, monitors typically sit on a desk rather than being mounted on a wall. A monitor is sometimes referred to as a screen, display, video display, video display terminal, video display unit, or video screen. We will use these USB ports to connect our normal input devices, including keyboards and mice. Devices will connect to the USB port by just sliding the adapter into the port. Special note, the USB connector will only fit one way. It can often be very frustrating to find the correct way to insert it, but be patient. Insert carefully. If it doesn't fit the first direction, flip it over and insert it again. The most common items we will connect will be your keyboard and mouse, and let's look at those items in more detail. This is a standard personal computer keyboard. We're showing a Windows-based keyboard here. A keyboard for Macintosh is very similar with a few small differences. We'll talk about those in the Macintosh section. The layout of this keyboard is called a QWERTY layout due to the way the letters Q, W, E, R, T, Y are in order. This has been the standard layout for computers and typewriters since 1874. You will want to be comfortable in typing on a keyboard. The best practice is to put your hands on what is called the home row. This puts your left pointer finger on the F key and the right pointer finger on the J key, with each remaining finger on the keys directly to the left or right. Practicing using the computer in this way will help you become a more natural typist and make working on the computer more enjoyable. In addition to the standard character keys, there are additional keys that you'll want to know. These are called function keys. They are pre-programmed by the computer operating system and then will automatically change based on the application that you're using. For instance, pressing the F5 key will bring up the search function in Microsoft Word, but the go to function in Microsoft Excel. The backspace key. This removes the character directly behind the cursor. The delete key. This removes the character directly in front of the cursor. Additional keys that you'll find useful are the insert key. This insert button toggles the insert function on and off. By default, this is toggled on. When turned on, it will push the other characters to the right that are next to the cursor. When toggled off, typing in an existing set of characters will replace them. You will be typing over those characters. So be careful when using the insert function on and off. The caps lock key. This puts all characters that you type into capital letters. The shift key does the same function, but only while you have it pushed down. This is good for the beginning of a sentence. When released, characters go back to normal. The control and alt keys will have very special functions in applications and operating systems. Those are beyond the scope of this module. However, if you hold down the control, alt, and delete buttons at the same time, this will trigger Windows menu that allows you to shut down the computer or put the computer to sleep. This can be useful to lock your computer before walking away. That's a security best practice. A mouse is used to move the cursor around the screen until you find something to interact with or get it to the position you want, for instance, in a spreadsheet or document. Notice how the cursor changes based on where it is on your screen. When you are inside of a text area, it will be a vertical line. If this is a document you're editing, clicking here will let you type there. 
when you come across an area you can interact with, it will change to an arrow or a finger pointing, allowing you to select an item. The left mouse button is the primary button used on the mouse. Once you have highlighted an item with your mouse, depress the left mouse button until you hear the click. This will then trigger the computer to do what you had selected, such as a web page hyperlink or opening a file. Sometimes it's necessary to double click. That means depressing the button twice in rapid succession. The right mouse button will typically bring up an alternate menu of things you can then select with your left mouse button. This menu will change depending on the program and what you're doing inside it. With applications like Microsoft Word, the right mouse button will let you format text by clicking it. Most modern mice also contain a back button. This is like a previous channel button on your television remote. It will take you back to where you were previously. On a web page, it will return you to the previous page. In Windows Explorer, it will take you back to the last viewed screen. To access the internet, you'll need to connect to a network. This will be done in one of two ways, either through an ethernet, wired connection, or through a Wi-Fi, wireless connection. This is an ethernet port. It's used for connecting this computer into a computer network, either to connect with other computers in a local network or to connect to the internet. It uses a physical cable to make this connection. Depending on your home internet setup, you may have an ethernet cable plugged into this port and then into your modem or router. We'll discuss modems and routers in more detail in the Networking Essentials module and also in the Windows and Mac Essentials modules. Now that we know our way around the computer, we're actually going to start to use it. First, you would power on the computer by pressing the power button. When you first turn the computer on, it will go through a series of operations called a boot sequence. This is where the computer is being fed all of its instructions in order to be able to function. This will also load the operating system that you will interact with, typically Windows or Apple Mac. But you may also see Unix or Google Chromebook. That's where this module ends. We'll pick up more in the Windows Essentials module that you might want to start next. I hope you've enjoyed this module. If you'd like to have this material used as reference, just click the link to the materials. And we'll see you in the next module.